These devils are hurt. I mean hurt. Goodness. About eight years ago, when you would go live on YouTube, the moment you would fire it up, you would just start seeing multiple people signing in. And all these different names would start popping up. Like fast. It was crazy. <clears throat> and the names would just pop in fast and furious. So I'm going to give it a couple of minutes. But uh, again, this is um amazing. What we're seeing in these last days. We know this is the truth because if it wasn't, it wouldn't be getting messed with. Videos taken down, deleted. <clears throat> Hello, watching from Prince Edward Island. As long as it's not Epstein Island, then you would have a right to remain silent. And everything you say would be held against you in the court of law. But anyway, I have to look this up. Prince Edward Island. Oh, Atlantic Canada. Okay. Yeah, I'll look it up when I get done with the lesson. Well, welcome. Glad to have you. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to go ahead and jump into it. <laughs> hey, I got a sense of humor. I'm balanced, though. Not a pushover. I'm very balanced. Not a flame-breathing dragon. And I'm not a teddy bear either. Barney. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to get ready to jump into it. I got a special treat tonight. What are we looking at here? This is a 1927 Bible Dictionary. 1927 Bible Dictionary by John, <laughs> by John D. Davis from Philadelphia, the Westminster Press, 1927. There was a church flyer in here from 1932 talking about the Messiah Bible College. There was a meeting on June 3rd, 1932. Interesting. At 9.30 a.m. I just kept this in here. <clears throat> but these people are probably with the Lord by now. My goodness. So this Bible was donated by the beloved brother, Zahar Yahawada. He's been with me for about five and a half months. That's been reading and studying under GMS Virginia North and GMS DC. <clears throat> so I want to go here before I do. Shalom. Barakatha Yahawah. Barakatha Yahawah Shai. I'm going to let you know, sister, the Bible says, let our women learn in silence. 1 Peter 2 and 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So it's a chat board, but it's mainly for the, the brothers to post scriptures. We don't celebrate birthdays. Job chapter 3 speaks out against that. It's pagan to celebrate birthdays. So we don't want that queen of heaven spirit to seep into the truth. That's why we got the pedo Jeff Epstein Island. The men have lost their damn mind because they lost their place. Everything is out of order with dominant women that kick the male out of the house and get Section 8 housing, alimony, and child support, and then move her boyfriend in. That's the daughter of Babylon in the nutshell. America. <coughs> now, where was I? We're going to go ahead and start here. Shalom. Barakatai Yahweh. 
Rakata Yahawa Shai. Rakata Yahawa. Rakata Yahawa Shai. Call Halayim La. Yahawa. Bahashim. Yahawa Shai. Bahashim. Or call Kadash. Double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so. Pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Much love, honor, and respect to the beloved brothers of the hopeful elect, helping to edify the body and feed the lambs of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> okay, 1927 Bible Dictionary. We're going to look up Edom or Edom. I'm on page 188. And it says Edom, also known as Idumia. Idumia is the Greek pronunciation, or Edomia, a name of Esau given in memory of having sold his birthright. The Edomites collectively, the region occupied by the descendants of Edom or Esau. It was originally named Mount Seir. Now, mount or mountain also means government. That's why they have these summit meetings, because it's the peak over the nations. <clears throat> but he literally lived in Mount Seir as well. It was originally called Mount Seir. At the time of the 16th or 17th dynasty, around, at the time of the sixth, one moment, yes, at the time of the 16th or 17th dynasty, probably as early as the 12th dynasty, it was known as, it was known to the Egyptians as Edema, Edema. Wow, the Egyptians called it Edema around the 12th century BC. In the mind of the Israelites, Edom, as the same name of the country, was no doubt associated with the settlement of their kinsmen. Edom in that region. It is a mountainous and extremely rugged country. So I hate to say this, but the brother of Edom is Jacob. And in the last days, Jacob's hand would be in the neck of his brother Edom or Esau. <clears throat> so that last days is talking about the daughter of Babylon, America. How do we know that? Psalms chapter 137, the last three verses from about six on down. So that's Edom. Let's go to one more. Let's go here to one moment. I lost my place. Yeah, Esau dwelt in Mount Seir. I want to go to, wow, this Bible dictionary is old. When you start teaching, these spirits be messing with you. You'll lose your page. I mean, it's unbelievable. All right, Esau, page 216. I want to get to the key point. The lighting is in here is bad. As he grew up, he became a skillful hunter. They love to hunt today. They have like these $20,000 safaris to Africa. 
and Central and South America. As he grew up, he became a skillful hunter and was accustomed to venison or making venison. Doubtless the flesh of various antelope. See, who do you see on these pictures? In these hunting magazines. Esau. On one occasion, he returned from chasing or he was famished and asked for the pottage. I'm not going to read all that. We know that. Let's go here. I'm going to change books. I'm going to go to this one here. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. And it is dated <clears throat> the date on here, nineteen sixty seven. Nineteen sixty seven. Let's go to Edom. One moment. Edom. All right, one moment. Once I learn my ABCs, I'll go to Edom. Okay, it's right here. Edom, the kingdom of Edom was founded during the 13th century BC, according to archeological evidence. In the process of about four centuries, the government of Edom changed from one under tribal chiefs to a monarchy. Now, what tribal chiefs were they under? They were under the Israelites and they rebelled under Judah. Somebody post that, please. I think it's Second Chronicles 17. <clears throat> well, let's read that. <laughs> let's read that again. In the process of about four centuries, the government of Edom changed from one under tribal chiefs to a monarchy. <clears throat> it says Saul fought against the Edomites. But David conquered them and put garrisons throughout the whole land. So the Israelites established government control over the Edomites. But they rebelled under when the kingdom split in half and under Judah. Let's jump down to verse, excuse me, I'm on page 142. Let's go here. I'm going to read, it says, when Jerusalem was destroyed and Judah depopulated by the Babylonians in 586 B.C. So we're going to find out that Edom is associated with Babylon. They took on their customs, their worships. So they became allies to the Babylonians. So this is where we see the connection of the daughter of Babylon with the Edomites when in Psalms 137. Let's read that again. Bear with me. The lighting is bad. It says, <clears throat> one moment, when Jerusalem was destroyed and Judah depopulated by the Babylonians, in 586 B.C., the Edomites rejoice over the affliction of the Judeans and begin to take over the southern part of Palestine. Eventually, they penetrated as far north as far north as Hebron. Now, I visited Hebron or Hebron, H-E-B. R O N. <clears throat> when I was in the the second phase of the Iraq War, I visited Hebron or Hebron. That's where some of the major fighting took place in Iraq. 
Let's read this again. It says, the Edomites rejoice over the affliction of the Judeans and begin to take over the southern part of Palestine. Eventually, they penetrated as far north as Hebron. This, this action intensified the already smoldering hatred between the Jews and the Edomites. See, what are we reading about right here? Now we're going to see that connection with modern-day America or the daughter of Babylon and the Edomites. <clears throat> Book of Psalms 137, verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. Erase them or destroy the inhabitants of Judea, the Israelites. Verse 8, O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. So they served us by putting us in captivity or slavery. And they helped the Babylonians take us down and scatter the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. But there was a contingent of the southern kingdom left intact. Even until the time Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior, arrives on the scene. Arrive the scene. Shalom, beloved brother. I'm off your eyes from your howard. Shalom, Barakatha. So now we see the connection with Babylon. Let's keep going. There's something else I want to show here. Watch this. The Assyrians, the who? The Assyrians came into contact with Edom as the early 17th century B.C. So they also took on the Assyrian worships. The Assyrians came in contact with Edom as early as the 17th century BC when her kings began to penetrate as far south as Palestine. Edom, along with Judah, and her other neighbors paid tribute to Assyria for many years. She is mentioned many times as the inscription of the kings of Assyria. So she's also associated with the Assyrian oppressors and the Egyptians that called Edom Edema. You see the connection there. That's all I wanted to get. Page 142, 1967, Compact Zondervan Bible Dictionary. <coughs> now let's go into the lesson. So this is why sometimes Edom is referred to as just oppressors or sometimes called the Assyrians or sometimes called Babylon, which is connected to the ancient Babylonian kingdom. That makes sense? All right, let's go here. So many great men warn against Lady Liberty or the daughter of Babylon, America. Yes, this is good. Brother Yanaga Yasharala Benjamin, Isaiah 52 and 4. For thus saith the Lord God, my people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. See the connection? Now, therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught, that they that rule over them 
make them to howl, saith the Lord. And my name continually every day is blasphemed. So how do we know this is ta talking about? So the oppressors or Edom, they're the only nation that's not promised salvation or mercy. Only the Edomites can blaspheme the Most High's name and his word and his doctrine. So you brothers out there teaching, tell them, telling GMS stop the blasphemy. You don't understand the scriptures. Let's get this on Edom, the only nation not promised mercy or salvation. That's a good scripture, Op. The water Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Stop telling the Israelites to stop the blasphemy. You don't understand the scriptures. See, let's read here. Edom, page 142. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments. She, say what? She, that's the daughter of Babylon, Lady Liberty. We got to take our time. We got to take our time. <clears throat> See, remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom and the daughter of Babylon, <laughs> Psalms 137. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy. Beautiful precept, Ah, Let's go back to that. Brother Yanaga Yasharala Banyamyan, or Benjamin. See, Isaiah 52, Verse 5, now therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away, or not? They that rule over them make them to howl, saith the Lord. And my name every day is blasphemed. So we know this is talking about Edom. How else do we know? What's another precept? By the way, this is a hands-on video and ministry, not just sitting on a sideline and clapping like a black seal. So how else do we know? Well, it's in Revelations 12. If somebody can post that. I'm not, yeah, Revelations 12. The angels were blasphemed. His name is blasphemed. See? So it's talking about the beast which is connected to the dragon, which is connected to Rome. Why do you think they wore a dragon on their armor, or on their shields? I think if somebody would post it. That is, in, yeah, no revelations. All right, let me go into the lesson. So the daughter of Babylon pushes a queen mother of heaven spirit, goddess worship, Mother Mary, Anana, Isis, Diana, Aphrodite, Athena, and it's pushed in an effort or in a vain attempt to kill the warrior ethos or to break down a male patriarchal system, which the tabernacle of David is built upon. <coughs> so this queen of heaven worship is designed to cripple the man. Hence, we get the term toxic masculinity. So she is the only neighbors of the Israelites not promised salvation. So she has exalted herself above the most high. It is that blasphemy right here. So you Jakes, I know I'm not going to call their names. One of them wanted to be a part of the brotherhood, but was rejected. 
Revelations 13 and 4. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? <coughs> so that beast is the Roman Empire. So America aligned with the European Union and NATO and its federation is a regenerated Roman Empire with a great military, Revelation 13 and 4. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy, and what? And blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months for a time and times and a dividing of times. Revelation 13 and 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell therein. Connects right back to Isaiah 52, verses 4 through 6. So it's talking about the beast or the revised Roman Empire, which is also called what? The Great Whore, a conglomeration of the Assyrian gods, the Egyptian gods, the Babylonian gods, the Greek gods, the Roman gods. So she's also called the Great Whore. So the main culprit, which is really the primary culprit, guilty of blasphemy, is the beast, the dragon, Rome, Edom. So you don't understand the scriptures there, young buck, talking about GMS need to stop the blasphemy. Now let's go here to Isaiah 45. I hate beating on retarded kids on the playground, but they're proud though, and keep trying to throw blows at you with a crooked arm. Just stop it. The Lord hates a proud heart <coughs> or malice, envy, wrath, contention. Isaiah 45, verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord. And there is none else. There is no God besides me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Notice, there is no God besides me. So when you read, she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her that said, where is the Lord thy God? It's the daughter of Babylon, a queen mother of heaven's spirit that promotes a rebellious Eve spirit. So, the, so Eve gadding about or gadding abroad, twerking on TikTok, fans only club, kicking the husband out of the house, moving the boyfriend in, getting child support, alimony, and section eight housing is a subcomponent of the queen mother of heaven or goddess spirit, the daughter of Babylon. That's why she's empowered to do these things. There is none else besides me. So she's a boss bitch, and for lack of a better word, excuse me, for the harsh language. Shalom, gospel of good news. See that? <clears throat> so Eve is a boss bitch under the daughter of Babylon. Or for better, hopefully, hopefully I try to explain as best I could. So she has said, I am, and there is none else besides me. Let's read this again. Isaiah 45, verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, 
though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God besides me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. For the Most High is in control. Not the Queen Mother of Heaven, not the daughter of Babylon, not the virgin daughter of the Chaldeans, or the Israelites seeking salvation. Isaiah 47, verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. So she's not going to be exalted above the kings of the earth, which really those kings start with Jacob, the kings. But we're in a trodden down state and it branches out to the other nations. But Israel was taken down first. So the kings of the earth were exalted above the Lord's temple above his tabernacle. His sanctuary was trodden down by the heathen, the Gentiles. See, let's read that again. <coughs> Isaiah 47. So she's going to be brought down to the dust of the earth, trodden down in the mire of the streets. And these bogged out two-thirds women that want to be men, starting with you Eves out there. Isaiah 47, verse 8. Therefore, hear now this, thou that are given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that saith in thine heart, I am, and none else besides me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. So this is a rebellious spirit of feminism women's liberation and equality. So it kills the male warrior ethos and accuses the men of toxic masculinity. The international bankers is trying to protect their assets. So they had to emasculate the men and promote female dominance through a spirit of witchcraft a seductive spirit. So it's not just feminism and women's liberation, but there's a twist of enchantment. Stand now with thine enchantment. That's in the same chapter. Isaiah 47, the media propaganda, Hollywood, news, TV, newspapers. So she is exalting herself above the will of the Father. <coughs> Isaiah 47, verse 10. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else besides me. So when Eve consume the doctrine of the serpent, which translates into Nakash in the Hebrew, she took on a spirit of witchcraft. Eve is the first witch. All right? Eve is the first witch. I'm just telling you. So when she consumed the apple, she partook of the serpent's philosophy. His doctrine, which is a perverted mindset. So there's a perverse spirit here in the land of Brokebacks, the daughter of Babylon. That's why we got Epstein Island. See how everything fits together? That's why we got scared men that are sitting on the sideline, clapping like seals, and won't put their hand to the plow. So many prophets spoke about the daughter of Babylon, America. For the GMS Kabar Dama. 
1 Samuel 15 and 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he have also rejected thee from being king. So the context of that was Saul. Uh, Samuel was rebuking Saul for being rebellious. But it also applies to the land of Marathaim, or double rebellion, the daughter of Babylon. So, so far we've covered, <clears throat> Isaiah spoke about America. Who else spoke about America? King Solomon, which is Yahweh Shai. He spoke about America. Let's go to Proverbs 23. King Solomon is Yahweh Shai. Somebody, let's prove that. Somebody post. Uh, <clears throat> One moment. Let's prove it. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Now let's go to Matthew 1 and 1. Matthew 1 and 1. The book of the generation of Yahweh. <laughs> The book of the generation. <clears throat> One moment. I got to get these things removed. Dry voice. Matthew 1 and 1. The book of the generation of Yahawashai Hamashiach, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Now let's go back to Proverbs 1 and 1. So Yahawashai and King Solomon are the same spirit, different bodies. Proverbs 1 and 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Same spirit, but came back in different bodies. Now, let's go here. So King Solomon spoke about the daughter of Babylon. But it's all spoken in a mystery, dark sayings. <clears throat> Proverbs 23, verse 27. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. Wow. Who is that whore? Let's go to Revelation 17. So King Solomon, Shai is speaking against the daughter of Babylon. Let's go to Revelation 17, verse 1. A book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven seals. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vows. And talked with me, saying, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. See? And the blood brother Jim Escobar Dama got it. So King Solomon is warning his elect not to be defiled with idols or to lay in bed with this beast with a long hair weave, this great red beast wearing a wig. King Solomon warned us against her. Brother Jim Escobar Dama, Revelation 17 and 5, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. See, <clears throat> let's go back. Revelation 17, Verse 1, and there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vows and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon 
many waters. So her military bases, over 800, is on scattered around the world across peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And her domestic territory is comprised of a melting pot of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. See? <coughs> so King Solomon is warning us, which is Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior. Let's go back to Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 27. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. So that pit is a valley, a sunken place. Why you think they show that in the movie, Get Out? A she-beast put him under a spell, witchcraft, enchantment, and he fell into a sunken place. Jake did, because he trusted this witch, the mistress of harlots. Proverbs 23, verse 27. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also lieth in wait as for a prey, and increaseth the transgressors among men. So she seduces you with her appeal, her allure. Come all ye nations, bring your sick, lame, lazy, weak, emasculated men and your masculine Jezebel women all come into my borders and suck with me and forsake the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's say all people are equal, united, indivisible, one nation under a satanic system with inequality and bondage for all. Proverbs 23 and 29. Who have woe, who have sorrow, who have contention, who have babbling, who have wounds without cause, who have redness of eyes. They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mix wine. Is that on here? the cup of the Lord's wrath, the wine of Babylon. I don't see it. That connects to Jeremiah. That's in Jeremiah 51. So that wine is her doctrine, feminism, women's liberation, women's equality, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Kemetic faith, the African gods, the Hamatic gods, the Egyptian gods, rolled into one. So she is mixed with confusion, babbling. See, Brother Gavar Dama, Revelation 17 and 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had seven vows and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Okay, we read it, but we'll read it again. That's okay. So this is her wine. Her philosophies, her doctrines are seductive. If I tell you liberty and justice for all, but I'm pushing racism, discrimination, then that's hypocrisy. But it sounds good. It's like makeup. You get this prostitute to your house, lay down with her, and in the morning, what the hell is this? Look like a baboon that just got a makeover. That's off. That's off. But she sounds good. Women's empowerment. See? Women's equality. Next thing you know, you wake up, and you're trying to get the hell away from this beast. Don't touch me. 
Don't touch me! <laughs> Let's go back to that wine. Proverbs 23, verse 30. They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mix wine. Look not thou upon the wine. Look not upon... Uh, Proverbs 23 and 31. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. So it smells good, looks good. An animal wearing perfume and makeup. But underneath is a beast. Once you take off the palm trees and take off the broom off the head. Nothing but pure wickedness. Let's go into that wine. <coughs> the beloved brother Andre serving in Havashai. Jeremiah 51, verse 7. Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. So men are bogged out. The kings of the earth, even the two-third Israelites, they're delusional. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. So her democracy is corrupt. Her Christianity is polluted and defiled. Her names of enchantment, calling on the golden retriever with blonde hair and blue eyes, blaspheming the angels, blaspheming the holy name, and crucifying or crossing out a true image of our Lord and Savior, a dark-skinned man with woolly hair, and his doctrine, and his name. So the only culprit guilty of blasphemy is Edom, the she-beast. Proverbs 23, verse 30. They that tarry long at the wine, when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright in the cup. That's her, that's her mixture. That's her, what are you, cistern. So her cup is used to seduce us to fall into a pit. Proverbs 23 and 32. At the last, it biteth like a serpent. This connects back to that dragon. The great red dragon. See? I know you see it. That's Revelation 12. So this serpent, Yahawashai, is warning us about is the dragon. Rome. Edom. A dragon is a large serpent. So it's talking about the Romans, Edomites. They use a dragon as their symbol or a serpent. And they use the red shield or red cross. Edom, Edomites. Let's read it again. Proverbs 23 and 32. At the last, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. So she is that deaf adder. So the Edomites are ruling in this dragon. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. So she has kindled a perverse spirit in the land of Babylon. The men are very emasculated or effeminate. The women are aggressive football linebackers. Very big, overweight, strong and aggressive and loud. They're not wife material. That's why brothers are buying passports and getting the hell out of Dodge going overseas. They're tired of marrying dragons. Thine eyes shall behold strange women and thine heart shall utter 
perverse things. So her ways are grounded in witchcraft, enchantment, sorcery. When you look up the word pharma, what is it called? Pharmakia for by her sorceries were all nations deceived. When you go into that word in Revelation 18 and 23, it goes to the word pharmakia, which is connected to pharmacy, which is directly connected to witchcraft in Revelation 18 and 23. By her sorceries, notice that her, by her sorcery, were all nations deceived. So she's always looking to put something in you to make you bugged out and then seduce you to lay down with her and get bugged out with her. Two drunk skunks that don't know which way is up. Nothing but bad can happen in that type of predicament. Thank you. The definition of the beloved brother Ganaga Yasharala Banyamyan, pharmacia, from the Greek, pharmakia, a healing or harmful medicine, a healing or poisonous herb, a drug, poisonous potion, magic, dye, raw material, or physical or chemical processing. Well, the daughter of Babylon is a she beast with a red wig on, hairy, just scary looking, but very seductive with the cosmetics, her appeal, her allure, her smells, her sights and sounds. Everything looks good in America, but when you get here, you're working three jobs, you done lost the house, you lost your kids, and you're working three jobs to take care of three women that left you or another man. So the American dream, in reality, is a nightmare under the surface, beneath the allure and the appeal. Then you're bugged out on psychotropic drugs, trying to get your mind right, working three jobs, and trying to get on a schedule to go see your kids. Unbelievable. So <coughs> let's go here. Obadiah 1. Verse 1, the vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord concerning Edom, we have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. So that her is the enemy, the daughter of Babylon. So this is where we are bearing the indignation of the Lord. Now we're seeing how the pieces fit together. When you look at the word metropolis, it breaks down into mother city. So Eve benefits off this kingdom, or excuse me, queendom. This is her world under the proverbial snake in the grass, Esau, Edom. Let's read it again. So this is where we're bearing the indignation, Micah 7 and 9. And I'm going to prove it. <coughs> Obadiah 1, verse 1, the vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom, we have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. So this is our enemy. Jeremiah 50 and 26. Come against her from the utmost border. Open her storehouses. Cast her up as heaps and destroy her utterly. Let nothing of her be left. Slay all her bullocks. Let them go down to the slaughter. Woe unto them, for their day is come, the time of their visitation, the voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion, 
the vengeance of the Lord our God, the vengeance of his temple. So his temple is in the daughter of Babylon. Let's go here. Brothers, Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. Micah 7, verse 9. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. The elect are going to be delivered out of the daughter of Babylon when the nuclear missile hits. That's his indignation against Babylon. But the elect are suffering under this great whore. See? Micah 7 and 10. Then she, that is my enemy, shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. Let's get something more on this indignation. Let's go to Deuteronomy 29 and 27. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. So the Israelites suffered the curses. Deuteronomy 29, verse 28. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. Say what? As it is this day. So Moses talked about the daughter of Babylon. Let's read it again and again and again and again. Deuteronomy 29 verse 27. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. Deuteronomy 29 and 28. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Let's go back to this sheep. This uh, <coughs> We're going to go back to the she-beast, which is Eve's metropolis, which means mother city. This is her world and the proverbial snake in the grass. Sleazy Eve, Esau, Edom, Micah 7 and 10. Then she that is my enemy, shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. She's going to be crushed. See, let's go to Jeremiah. Let's go here to first the brothers of Doc. <coughs> Brother Zadok. Now I can't find Brother Zadok. Now he's truly a lost sheep of the house of Israel. But I'm going to tirelessly search for that one. Can't find him. So that he posted. Okay, right here. Psalms 23 and 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Connects back to that pit that we read in some, uh, Proverbs. Let's get it. Proverbs 23, verse 27, for a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. So King David came over to this she-beast. 
of the coast of the shores of America in these ships and made his bed in hell on those slave ships. Let's go to Jeremiah 50. No. So more proof that these judgments and many, how many prophets have we covered? Micah, Jeremiah, Obadiah, King Solomon, which is Jehovah Shai, Isaiah. There's plenty. Let's go to Micah 7 and 7. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. What is that darkness? Let's get Job 10. Job 10, those last two scriptures. Oh, that's the spirit. I love this brother. Like a son, Brother Andre serving in Hawashai. Job 10 and 21. Before I go whence, I shall not return even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. A land of darkness and darkness itself and of the shadow of death without any order. With what? Without any order. And where the light is as darkness. What is that without order? Babal in the Hebrew Babylon, which means confusion. That's the darkness, the land of the shadow of death. The queendom, the lady of the kingdoms, the mistress of witchcraft, the mother of harlots. America comes from Medigo, which means bitter, a bitter captivity, bitter deaths, bitter injustices. Let's go back to Micah 7, <clears throat> verse 7. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. So Micah is back in the daughter of Babylon, the land of broke bats and Jezebels and witches. He's back, waking up to the light of this glorious gospel, dwelling in the land of the valley of the shadow of death. Micah 7 and 9, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause. How does the Lord plead? Is the Lord going to get on his knees, begging like a simp? Please, 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 hells to the no, to the nizzo, to the hell to the no. <coughs> He's going to plead with fire. See, it's right here. It's right here. Brother Gabar Dama, Revelation 18, verse 7. How much she have glorified herself and live deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall utterly be burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judge of her. So this hoe is going to be trodden down as the mire of the streets. <clears throat> and the Lord is going to plead with fire coming with the ladies and chariot ships or the so-called UFOs. Why you think they stood up a 24 hour, seven days a week UFO watch force. These are the chariots of the Lord. Or the Andre serving Yahweh Shai. Isaiah 66 Verse 15, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword, 
will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Many Jezebels and broke necks are going to be burned in that day. They're proud as hell. They are proud. Micah 7, verse 8. <coughs> Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. So Micah has been raised from the dead to the light of the glorious gospel. Micah 7 and 9. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. So Micah is going to be taken up. All the world is going to see the salvation of Israel and his glorious righteousness in delivered from the chariots of the Lord. Come, enter ye into my chambers. Shut thy doors about thee round about until my indignation be overpassed. So Micah is going to be saved from this hope. Somebody post that. Isaiah 26, the last two scriptures. Micah 7 and 9. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. What righteousness? Well, let's read about it. The beloved brother, Gabar Dama, Isaiah. No, nope, let's go here. Isaiah 26 and 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. The so-called UFO or fathership is going to take up his elect. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. See how the scriptures flow together. Micah 7 and 9, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Micah wakes up to the truth and then see the morning star, the light of the world coming back in the chariot ship, a scepter or a star of Jacob in Numbers 24. Brother Basic Wisdom, Shalom, beloved, Barakatha, Luke 19 and 27. <coughs> But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. That's the two-thirds, which is led by Eve. She don't like being underneath order. She'd rather be submissive to her boss, massive, at her job, so she can get employee of the year awards, smiling, and then come home and it's the devil that the Bible speaks of. And kicks the man's ass. And if you complain, she calls the caveman. 1-800 cavemen are us. Next thing you know, the husband living in a tent. And your wife's boyfriend is living in your place. That's Babylon for you. So a lot of Eves are going to be dismayed too. But really, that's the entire house of Saul. Which is led by Eve. Goddess worship. The woman is God, my brother. All you comedic Negroes, you're rolled up into that number. Bug out. <laughs> Along with the Yah clan. The Yah clan wearing long hair. Crazy as hell. So you're all rolled up into that number. Let's read it again. <clears throat> Good scripture. My love, brother, basic wisdom. It's going to be long hair and eyebrows and eyelashes 
and dreads and raids all over the place. A big mess, road and fire. Luke 19 and 27. But those my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. That's beautiful. <coughs> Let's go to Babylon, Micah. We're going to stay in Micah. I'm going to go to Micah 4. So Micah is speaking about the daughter of Babylon. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Yahweh Shai, or King Solomon, Obadiah, John on the island of Patmos. Have we missed anyone? See? Micah 4 and 9. Now why dost thou cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counsel to perish? Or pains have taken thee as a woman in travail? <laughs> so Jake is going to endure Jacob's trouble. He's speaking to the sons of Jacob. His voice is to the sons of men. Yeah, we read that one already, King. See? I'm going to get ready to wrap this up. So, oh, we forgot about Moses. Moses spoke about the daughter of Babylon. Read Deuteronomy 29, verse 27 and verse 28. Let's go back to 28. Deuteronomy 29 and 28. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. Somebody post where else Moses talked about the daughter of Babylon. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen, slave men, and slave women. Bond women. See? Yeah, it was talking about the other captivities. But the most notable captivity is Babylon the Great. Or spiritual Sodom in Egypt pursuant to Revelation 11 and 8. See? So Micah even spoke about it. Micah 4 and 9. Now why dost thou cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counsel to perish? For pains have taken thee as a woman in travail. Jacob's trouble. Micah 4 and 10. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. And she that is mine enemy shall see it, see the salvation of the glory of the Lord with ships. So a people that went into slavery with ships are going to be delivered by the Cadillacs of the sky with ships, the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord, or the Andre serving Yahweh Shai. Deuteronomy 26. I done forgot the Bible. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you. No man can redeem us. Malcolm X, Marcus Jarvie, Dr. Martin Luther the King, all fish food. So we got to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and saved by the light of the glory of his coming, traveling in the greatness of his strength, mighty to save. Micah 4 and 10, <coughs> be in pain and labor to bring forth. So the birth of the delivery of the nation of Jacob 
The Most High is a jake. So he speaks with hip talk. Slain. You dig? <laughs> Inside joke. <clears throat> Can you dig it? Micah 4 and 10. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shall thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field. And thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the land of thine enemies. So I saw a, a photo with jakes with guns in their hands. Those are not Israelites. Those are Israel niggas. I'm going to just tell you straight up. I don't care if you get mad. The Bible just said the Lord is going to save or redeem us. All you black devils are going to be rolled together and trodden down in the mire of the street. That mire is a miry, fiery tempest. I'm just telling you. I saw a photo with Jake's wearing fringes and holding guns. Let's close out here. I'm with love, Brother Zadok. <coughs> Brother Zadok, Luke 18 and 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man shall cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? So the Son of Man, Yahweh Shai, is going to redeem. He shall save. All right, I'll close out there. My voice is dried out. Salakia. So we got through this lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. So Eve is enjoying shaking it, shaking what her mother gave her on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, enjoying herself, kicking the man's ass out and moving in her boyfriend and getting her lover's kicks. I mean, you saw that movie, what was it called? Dead Presidents. Remember when Jake got locked up? His wife hooked up with a pimp. So Eve is getting goodies. Section 8 alimony and child support from the smooth, the smooth criminal. A smooth criminal. A smooth criminal. You've been hit by, you've been struck by, a smooth criminal, that's Esau. Okay, sleazy E. He's the real pimp. So a lot of E's got pimped out by this devil. Yeah, cutty buddy. So don't ever say I don't need a man. Somebody's paying the bills, damn it. You can't say I don't need a, somebody is paying the bills. You've been hit by and struck by a smooth criminal. Slick, slick Rick. So stop playing Eve. I don't need a man bullshit. Somebody's paying the bills. Section 8 ain't free. That's tax dollars from Sleazy E. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Section 8 is not free. It's tax dollars from Sleazy E. Along with alimony and child support. So this is a metropolis, a mother city. Talking about I don't need no damn man. That's a lie. You're either submissive to your husband or the devil. You can't fool us. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem, or Kadash. Double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of great most. Much love to, I love your brother, brother basic wisdom. That brother has a beautiful spirit. <coughs> love your brother. Yep. Shalom, Barakatham to you as well. And all the up-and-coming kings of the earth and the remnant of the hopeful elect. And Brother Bayan Yasharala, Andre serving Yahweh Shai, and the other brothers and sisters on here. Shalom, Barakatham. <coughs> Hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. All praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem.
I'm called Kadash. Or Rakatham. We got next, Lord willing. The tabernacle of David is coming. The tabernacle of David is coming. The house of the Lord is being raised up in these last days. And bullshit is on its way down, circling the drain, which is the daughter of Babylon, the mistress of witchcraft and the mother of harlots, America, Pam Yasharela, and the Babal, Shalom, <clears throat> Shalom.